All right, this is Garen Hess, and I'm going to spend a few minutes with you showing you how to convert a PowerPoint presentation using mLearning Studio to work on mobile devices such as iPads, iPhones, and so on. Now what I have here is I have a simple PowerPoint. It has, I think, 12 slides in it. Um, just for the purposes of illustration, I'll use a, this one. And I'm going to follow the instructions on, in the blog entry here. And so the first thing that we're going to do is export the audio and the, Im and the slides as images, and then we'll import those into mLearning Studio. So to export the audio, there is no just audio export in PowerPoint, but what you can do is you can click on the PowerPoint button here and then choose Save As and just click that. That'll give you a drop-down list where you can choose a web page, and when you choose web page, it will actually save all of the files, the media files, as separate files as part of this process. So that's how we're going to export the audio. So I'm going to locate where I want to save this, and I'm just going to save it. And it'll take a moment for it to process. If you go locate the files, you'll see that it creates an HTML page and then also a folder. If we go into that folder, go down to the bottom, you'll see all of the WAV files. So I'm going to actually move these and put them into a separate folder. So I've created a folder for these files. I'm just going to paste those in there. Now I've, been, I've exported the audio. Now that I'm done with that, I can just delete the other files, and I have the audio files. Now that I have the audio files, I'm ready to export the slides as images. So the process is very similar. You choose Save As, and instead of Web Page, you're going to choose JPEG. This will make a JPEG file out of every slide. So I'm just going to create a new folder called Image Files and I'm going to click Save. I'm going to do this for every slide. When it's done, it gives me a confirmation and I can go find those files. If I go look in that location and I open that, you'll see I have all the slides as separate images. I'm going to take those and just move them up into this directory and delete that directory that it created. So now I have two folders, one called audio files with all the audio in it and one called image files with all of the slides in it. One tip that I want to share with you is you may want to give a prefix to each of these files by selecting them all and then choosing rename and then just typing in the prefix. So I'm going to type in mlearning studio and then hit enter and you'll see it gives them all the same name with a suffix here so they all have the same prefix. This will make it easier to work with them in the media manager. I'm going to do the same thing with the image files. So I'll select them all, rename. Now we're ready to upload the audio into the media manager. Just choose the audio category here, click upload new audio browse for media, go find our media, our audio files, select them all and upload them. Now you see it says 12 left, so you can batch upload them and it'll tell you how many have left as it goes through each one. Now if I want to look for them while they're uploading, I can just type in mlearning because that's what my prefix is here. And if I search go or click go, now the reason it's doing this conversion into MP3 format is because that is what is needed for mobile devices to be able to stream correctly. If I want to test them to make sure they converted properly, I can just select one and click the controls down here to test those. Now we'll do the same thing for image files. So I'll click the Media Manager, and this time we'll go into the Image category and click Upload New Image, Browse for Media, go find our image files, select these, and again upload. And here you can see the files all converting. So now we have all of our audio and our slides uploaded into mLearning Studio. Now we're ready to put them together into a course. To put these into a course we need to create a new project. So I'm going to click Add a Project, then click Author and Review. We're going to give us a project name. So now we have uh, the name, we're going to choose the project lead. I would recommend choosing yourself. And we're going to start with an empty course, and we're just going to do for mobile only. 
So we'll go to the next step. Now we need to choose the mobile course style or course skin. I'm going to choose default mobile style and go to the next step. Now I need to assign people to the project. It's just me working on this one so I'm just going to leave myself selected and click create my project. So now we're ready to go in and, and uh, build and modify the project. This opens up the authoring environment itself. And now we can start adding pages. So I'm going to click add page and I'm going to choose image and audio and all these templates are compatible with mobile devices because I selected to create a mobile course and so it's showing only the templates that are compatible with that. So image and audio here. So I'm going to give it a title. Then I'm going to come down and click browse to browse for the image and this will be the slide number one that I want to look for. So again to find those easily I'm going to type in my prefix that I had named and I can just go to the first slide here, put that in. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is when you go to select that, you want to choose my original. What, what happens is Rapid Intake optimizes the file for smaller images, but we want the original so that it'll look great on larger screens like on the iPad. So I'm going to choose that insert that and I'm going to make it go to let's say 80 percent and then we'll go to the next step and I'm going to click browse to find the audio same thing going to go search for that audio and here's my audio file play that to make sure it's playing properly and it is so I'm going to insert that and we have that page done now what we can do to do all the other pages is we can just click the copy button and change the title and I could just double click right here and change studio 1 to 2 because I, all these are named with just suffixes at the end. I can do the same thing here with the audio file. So I can do that for every slide. On the image settings you probably want to choose image position center and of course the image width is actually going to help determine the size. It's the width of the image in relation to the width of the whole page. So you can play with that and see what you like but I like somewhere between 80 and 90 percent in general. Um, they can always zoom in on the image to get a closer look. Now when you're done doing that you can click preview to see what this will look like. Now if you're using Safari or Chrome you can actually get a preview right in the browser so now we have the preview coming up and you can see all the different slide titles down the left. This is a tablet preview of course, 10 inch tablet and we can move from slide to slide. You can see that the learner can zoom in and look a little closer at slides if they need to. So this gives you a rough approximation of what this is going to look like. Um, actually quite accurate but it, there are some minor differences that you might see. And you can click play down here to play the audio files. If we look at what it looks like uh, rotated, meaning in um, portrait mode, you can see uh, looks very similar just the table of contents hides. If we look at the iPhone view or the I should say the phone view we just have an iPhone as a sample here but this is really just a smartphone view you'll see again they see the slide they can listen to the audio they can also zoom in and get a really detailed look if they want to uh, look at it that way. Now if you want to view it on your own device and I would recommend that click preview send yourself an email and pick that email up on your device that will send have a link where you can preview it. Once you're done previewing you're ready to deploy the course or you can do use some of the collaborative testing features here. I'm going to click deploy the course and for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to create a public link but you can see here you can uh, deploy to 
your learning management system, and so on. So I'm going to click Create a Public Link, click Publish. So now you can see we have a public link here, and now I can email it to whoever I need to. And you can separate emails with commas. And now you have a published PowerPoint that can be viewed with mobile devices. And of course you can add to that PowerPoint quiz questions and other kinds of interactions, video and so forth, anything that you can add using mLearning Studio. But this goes through the process of showing you the basic steps to convert the PowerPoint.